Hello, everyone. We're here for our weekly video. And we want to remind you before you even start this weekly video, this weekly video is for y'all. So it so give us suggestions. We're coming up with things that we think people need to hear. But if you guys have something, a topic that you want to learn more about, um, maybe like I had some questions on the juicing, which we'll answer a little later in this video. But make sure that you make a comment below here with some suggestions of some topics if you want us to discuss something, because we're just we're coming up with what we think needs to be discussed and we want to you know, answer what y'all need. Um, so this week we thought we would go over um, being proactive versus reactive with your health. And I wanted to give you guys an example. And the, the reason that we kind of share our lives with you is because not to tell you what to do. It's just like, this is what we do to be proactive in our health. So for example, last night I was supposed to go get my hair colored in Tampa. I mean, I'm sorry, in Orlando. And it's about a two hour drive over and a two hour drive back. So it's like, a, depending on traffic, it might be a five hour drive in the car. And really that's the only thing that brings my neck and my shoulders since I got rid of it with a sound healing therapy. That's the only thing that triggers that kind of tension again. And I know it, okay, because I've done it a few times. So being proactive in my health journey I went ahead at the beginning of the week and scheduled a massage for 10 a.m. this morning, knowing that I was going to have that tension. I didn't want to go all day Friday, you know, and let it build up and then try to get in with a massage therapist over the weekend when I'm in pain. Like, I don't want to wait until I know that I'm going to be in discomfort to go do something about it. If I know that there's going to be a cause and reaction to being in a car on I-4, for four hours. So that's how I handle being proactive. Um, Lori, Lori, last week we had, we talked about a journal. So yeah, so I think that's, it's really important, especially with foods and stuff. If you're dealing with your body, um, I lived with IBS my whole life. So I knew what I could eat and what I couldn't eat. This is before I entered on this journey, but I still knew what affected me in a bad way and what didn't. And it, it was because I kind of learned by making a journal and documenting everything of how I felt and I could pinpoint things to certain foods or certain restaurants that would make me spend the next day in the bathroom. So I know all of y'all have perfect health and perfect um, no GI issues. So you might not need to do this, but you know, the journal is just for documentation for yourself. So you can figure things out. All of this process is a learning process and every single person is an individual. So you can't bucket everybody in the same category because this person might be this way. This person, like, you know, my cousin could eat Mexican food. He has IBS. I could not. So, you know, it's um, not everybody's the same, but you have to kind of tailor it to what your needs are. But being proactive, I knew what to eat or what, what to avoid because my family likes Mexican restaurants, but I knew what I could eat and I stuck to it and I didn't have any issues. Now I can eat whatever I want because my gut is okay. And I take these products that keep the inflammation down and the toxins out. I don't do it all the time, but I can just pretty much eat anything now without any reaction. <laughs> so um, you, you have to learn. And, you know, this whole process is learning. And I think that once you have that down, you can kind of control it and manage it a little bit better. I, do you agree, Trish? Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, I, I know you, you, I think the thing is that you have to learn how to listen to your body. Like, I don't think people know how to do that, know how to do that. Like, you know, it, it shouldn't get to the point, like, I don't want to have any kind of pain in my body whatsoever. So I know when to, when to, how to regulate it, 
and how to like, you know, I know that if I'm going to eat, you know, a bagel or something heavy on carbs or something in the morning, I know for the rest of the day, I'm not going to eat any more heavy carbs again. You know, it's going to be mostly liquid, maybe soup, maybe vegetable. I mean, you fruit. Just, you, fruit, you just kind of, you, you have to kind of think that way. And I guess maybe it's easy for me because I've made health such a high priority in my life because I understand that without your health, you like, what's the point of having any, what's the point of having anything else? So like, and we, we understand that it's hard to break habits that you've had all your life. You know, I have uh, somebody that I'm coaching right now that pancreatic cancer survivor, which is very, very rare, but he's consistently drinking sodas still, right? And I'm like, at some point, you have to give that up. Like you're, you're so lucky and blessed and gifted to be at this point where you've got that pancreatic cancer behind you, but that corn syrup, we know does really bad things to your sugar and your body and bad, bad, bad energy, you know? So, so you got, you just have to do it. You have to make it a priority. Well, it's kind of like any diagnosis, like, um, like high blood pressure or diabetes. There's, you know, there's medication that keeps it controlled, but again, you're doing something every day to get it under control. Now you can lose weight and start exercising and, but people, you know, nowadays want a quick fix. This is not a quick fix. It is, you know, you have to do your part and physicians just hand people pills all the time. And without explaining the other things that need to go hand in hand with it. So yeah, that's a great. Okay, so I didn't realize in this book, I wanted to kind of give you guys a heads up. Lori hasn't gotten hers yet. She's got hers on order. I can't believe how out on a limb this uh, person, this doctor, Casey Means, goes at ratting out the medical industry. One, like she's got some big cojones for stepping out and ratting them out. And then, you know, she goes through, if you want it, there's a lot of science in this, okay? So- but but it's pretty simple. It's pretty broken down, but there is a lot of science. So you kind of got to get through it and get that that um, the meaning behind it. And, and basically she's saying the same exact stuff with a different language that that Lori and I say all the time. Yeah, it's again, you have to be aware of your body, you know your limitation, know your body. That's the first thing. That's this whole problem purpose with journaling is know your body know what you can eat know what you can't eat know if I eat a donut I'm gonna throw up I haven't eaten a donut in seven years but if I you know they're sitting by me at work because these drug reps bring them in and I don't touch them like I'm like oh you know I, I just am I don't because I don't have sugary stuff but I know if I do you know if it's a birthday or something and there's a birthday cake you know I'll take a bite but that's about it I cannot I can't do it anymore plus I, it makes me feel bad again Trisha's talking about I feel bad I don't want to feel bad so I avoid it so you know you learn what to avoid and that's the whole purpose of this um and I think like I know someone in our group has gone like extensively knows what she can eat what she can't eat she's tried this tried that and that's awesome I mean, I think it's great because that's the first step. That's how I know that they want to get better. Right. There's Well, you know what? And I'm going to share a story. I had a conversation with Casey and she's in our group and she's a breast cancer survivor. And we had a conversation and she is keeping a journal now too. She's about to turn 60. She's total remission, total health. But there is something she made. It's on my phone. I don't want to have to go and scroll through it and find it. But I will be posting that because I asked her if I could post that because it was a perfect example of of what we're talking about about being proactive taking action um making yourself accountable and figuring stuff out on your own and it was great and I asked her can I share this because you're such a exceptional patient and in that book that I read 
a couple of times before, you know, my current book, the Bernie Siegel book, the doctor, the surgeon from 1986, he classified and he did most of his surgery were on cancer patients. He classified um, patients as being exceptional. And those were the ones I'll have to pull it up out. Maybe I'll write a post on that or something, but he had a list of what made an exceptional per, uh, patient. And it was a, the patients that were asking questions, that were taking responsibility, that were challenging the doctors, that were doing their own research, that like formed a partnership with the physician and said, hold on, you know, wait a second, I don't know about this. Let me ask some questions. Let me go do some research. And, and they like took charge and, and Casey is like the best example of an exceptional patient, I would say. I mean, she, th her husband had, could, I would give him something, he would go because he was studying his doctorate in psychology or something. So he had access to all these studies and he would go and get all these studies and then take a whole booklet of um, studies that had to do, and it had to do with Noni and breast cancer study. There's a ton of studies out there. It's just that you kind of have to have access to those medical studies to, to get a hold of them and took them to the oncologist and the oncologist is like, oh my gosh, I've never even seen these. These are wonderful. You know? Yeah, they so, don't teach it. Yeah. So you have I'll to know your it. body, you have to keep a journal and you have to be an exceptional patient. And make a change. And Do one change. Make one change. change. And then, oh, I wanted, I want to totally promote this. I, I found this, I'm going to, on the house, on the um, coaching program, I'm going to put some products on there that I've found recently that I absolutely are using and love. And this thing, it's peppermint rosemary. It was established in 1977, apparently this oil. And there's like, it's all it is, is oil and herbs and like essential oils. But there's like 72 different, like you, when you put it on, you can smell the clove and the cinnamon. And like, if you put it on your chest, it actually kind of opens up your chest. Like it is amazing. And if anybody's interested, let me know, comment, and I'll look up to where to purchase this. I didn't purchase it. My neighbor gave it to me um, to try and I love it. So um, like always, if you guys have any questions, comments below. If you have any suggestions or topics that you guys want to hear about, I know that my post that I did on the juicing, that got a lot of engagement and people wanted to know if I put the whole clove or if I use the powder turmeric. No, I use the turmeric tum root. I think that's what it's called, right? The root, the little piece. I think so. Caterpillar or whatever. Um, and no, I don't peel them. I just chop them up and put them in, in my juicer. So... That's all I got for you this week. How about you, Lori? I'm good. All right. You guys have a great week and comment. See you later. Bye. Bye.